So it's almost like this talent contest to get your hawker store. Welcome back to Saturday Mornings. Uh, we welcome now to the show Pierre Luigi Sigismondi, the global president of Dole Sunshine Company. Pierre Luigi, welcome. Great to see you again. Thanks, Glenn, and great to see you guys in a rainy day here in Singapore. Yeah. It's a good day to be inside listening to the radio and listening to this $10 million investment along with the EDB that, uh, that you are doing. Tell us about your Dole specialty ingredients. Yeah, this is a business that we're starting now as a sort of um, new venture together with the support of the ADB and ASTAR. It's quite a, an exciting project because we're trying to actually get the best of all the size streams and the waste that is generated from our farms in a way that we can convert them into good nutrition, enzymes, extracts, oils, and all kinds of dietary fibers, which are good for immunity, gut health, and the kind of things that you'll be talking about later today. Mm. Oh, it's a wonderful initiative. Yeah. I think it really is. Uh, food waste is a massive issue. It's been discussed in the last two weeks, of course, at COP26. It contributes to climate change. Anything that you can do to reduce that is absolutely magnificent. I'm just curious, where did the idea, the initiative come from? We're a bunch of people that have been working for decades in multinationals. And so when we started in Dole, we said, how can we be more entrepreneur? That's the kind of dream that every executive has in these big companies. So when we started this venture in Dole, we said, how can we be more creative? Start a business from scratch. Think like a startup. Think like an entrepreneur. And all I learned the first day is that pineapple has an amazing enzyme that is called bromelain. So mm -hmm. we said, why not just extracting that even more? It's good to sell fresh produce. It's good to sell packaged goods and juices. But we actually ended up asking ourselves, how can we create more value from the kind of waste or side streams, the things that we leave behind in our process, so we can have a much more successful business, engage with the farmers, and then do that kind of social entrepreneur that also helps the planet. So we call it the Dole Promise, and behind that, actually, the idea came up. So exciting days. We're talking with Pierre Luigi Sigismondi, the global president of Dole Sunshine Company, about the Dole Specialty Ingredients (DSI), uh, a new uh, ten million dollar initiative here in Singapore. Pierre Luigi, food science is nothing new, of course. It's been going on for many decades. Here in Singapore, we we have the likes of DSM, Unilever, Carteva, Nestle, all doing something in that, whether it's flavorings or foods or whatever. How? How does DSI, your effort, fit into sort of the, the topography of food science uh, research and food science uh, efforts in Singapore? There is a lot of fermentation happening in Singapore through the um, initiatives of the government, the 30 by 30, the EDB. Uh, actually, next week, there is a major agri-tech uh, you know, initiative or conference where everybody's talking about how can we it helps uh, improve the health span of consumers. So all companies are actually moving to what consumers now want, which is to live better and longer. So the, the notion about converting your business into value-added products where health-conscious consumers really want to eat better and, and live longer is what drives food companies today to get into these kind of new spaces. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's actually something that has been even more amplified due to COVID. So people have realized that you have to actually think twice, read the labels before you actually end up eating processed foods or any kind of stuff like that. So we believe that we can be longer and successful in our business if we end up, you know, go, working in these kind of products. And that's actually a trend that is happening in the industry overall. Yeah, and I mean, we'll get into supply chain shortly and how that's impacted upon fruit mm. and vegetables even more yeah. and made the need to save as much of our food waste as we can. And just to recap for those who missed it, one million of bananas and pineapple waste from Dole's plantations based out of the Philippines will now be repurposed. It's a wonderful initiative under the Dole Specialty Ingredients, which you set up in Singapore. The headquarters are here in Singapore, Pierre Luigi. Why did you pick this place? Yeah, as I said before, this is the, the best place to be. The government is really providing a lot of support. You have all kinds of uh, partnerships that are coming up with suppliers. ASTAR is an amazing uh, R&D facility that the government offers to companies to actually do research with great facilities in place. So 
Singapore is the hub for, for foods, and we believe that being here is actually quite a, a good place to be. Um, there are a lot of uh, initiatives happening, a lot of know-how coming in, a lot of support as well. And, you know, I cannot imagine another place in, in Asia where you can have the stability, the government support, the talent, mm. uh, and that investment in research R&D that we see happening today, which will project us to the future. Well, it seems to be a mutual relationship with Singaporeans. We've just had an extraordinary comment from one of our <laughs> listeners here, Pierluigi, who says, A.B. Terrence says, the wife loves Dole Bananas, literally <laughs> refuses to eat any other, which can be difficult in our lo local supermarket. So please get them in every store because the wife wants them on her Christmas list. <laughs> It's good. It's good to have fans, isn't it? Uh, and uh, Raj Vikar also on Facebook Live recycling, you know, giving back to Mother Earth. Uh, Ian Chan sounds like upcycling, yep. reducing waste. All of these are such great initiatives. Let's pivot just slightly to supply chain, because a lot of this does come back to the challenges we're seeing globally. Uh, I know from your past history, you you know, supply chains as good or better than when it comes to food as anybody uh, in this region. And what's your take on the current state of supply chain backups and, and challenges across Asia and, of course, going into North America? Yeah, it's one of the biggest challenges that we have right now. There is a lot of congestion, lack of uh, lanes, uh, which also come with significant higher cost. Not only mm. you're paying three, four times more, but the delays are quite significant. So it's quite challenging to run global supply chains nowadays. And that puts a question about how much can you localize your mm. production in a way that you can rely less uh, into these international global lanes, which is something that we're working on. Also, consumers and people want to eat more closer to home, the kind of provenance foods that are actually good for them as well. So it's been a good crisis for us to have because we've certainly been much more resilient. We have a supply issue today, not a demand issue, because consumers want to eat healthy and are demanding more our goods, but certainly there is a lot of inflation happening today out there. And unfortunately, against our will, we have to pass higher prices to our customers because otherwise we'll not have a viable business. So there is a lot of tension right now, but I think the stronger companies will be the ones that will take an advantage of this by looking at ways to reduce your cost, look for more partnerships, reshape your supply chain and be more resilient over time. But it's not an easy time nowadays. Yeah. No, very interesting. And you made the point there, short-term pain, we all have to bear the costs. But you also mentioned something very interesting, which is if there is a positive to come out of COVID, it has accelerated the need, the urgency mm. for homegrown produce. You know, Singapore Absolutely. is hoping to produce 30% of its own food produce by 2030. Is that something that you see Dole working with Singapore and other countries in the region accelerating growing as much of our produce locally or close to locally as we possibly can? We're localizing a lot of the product development and, and the R&D, but unfortunately, Singapore doesn't offer the kind of land and space for us to do the kind of verticalized agriculture that is typical of tropical fruits. It comes at a significant price, which will not make it viable for, for our people, for our consumers. But through the research and all the know-how that we're developing here, we're certainly doing more of that in Southeast Asia, which is, again, thanks to the support we get from the government. So I have another uh, role that I'm proud to lead, which is the chairman of uh, Sustenir, that is a vertical farm that is producing superfoods and, and healthy greens. And that certainly is an exciting venture that is happening here. We're growing exponentially. Uh, people are demanding more that kind of healthy, clean, salads or leaves which are certainly growing fast mm -hmm. and, and Singapore is the ideal place again to have those kind of ventures develop. So I'm excited yeah. to also be part of that uh, story. Pierre Luigi, how can we make those types of efforts and the hydroponics happening, how can we scale those in a way uh, that that will have any sort of real impact in Singapore. Food security, as you know, as the EDB knows, and everybody knows as Singapore, is, is such a critically urgent topic Huge. for this island. But how do we scale some of these great initiatives that are coming along? People are doing rooftop farming and yeah. et cetera, but it's just not enough, is it? How do we get to a better place? No, that's a great question. I think there is a, a lot of uh, fermentation, as I said before. Many companies are investing here. Uh, 
we we are certainly scaling up but singapore is not big enough as a market to actually have the yeah. economies of scale to have a viable business in the long term so we right. certainly yeah. need to rely again on the know-how that we have in here but create critical mass and volume growth in neighbor countries malaysia even hong kong indonesia these are fantastic markets where they have big cities that certainly are very prepared and fertile for these kind of investments so I think the notion of Singapore is more about creating quality of know-how. The 30 by 30 is going to be achieved, not just in uh, vegetables, mm. but also in, in fish, aquaculture. There is a lot of investment happening there. It is actually being scaled up. The disadvantage we have here is the cost of land, the cost of assets, and right. uh, it's not an easy thing to solve. We'll, we'll find a way over time. Yeah, that's at the corporate level, the government level. But I'm just thinking on a micro level, what advice or tips, suggestions would you give the consumer on a day-to-day -day basis? Because everybody wants to contribute. Everybody knows the dangers. Everybody knows about food security. Even to, on a daily basis, I'm trying to look for the right products. What advice would you give to the daily consumer who goes to the market, goes to the supermarket, buying their fruits and vegetables? You were talking a lot about vaccination and immunity. So first of all, I am convinced that food is medicine, and I'm not the only one that says that. So to our people, our consumers, our listeners, first, read the label. Read the kind of stuff that you're buying. Be mindful about the ingredients. Try to come up with choices which are as close as possible to clean labels, like no artificial ingredients, no sugars, no added kind of stuff that over time, it's going to put your, your health condition, your immunity, not in an ideal place. Then with that, uh, I think you have to sort of have a healthy, balanced life. Um, I, I am convinced that with good food, you can certainly extend your health span. And that allows you to live not only longer, but also better as well. So I think it's all about being mindful of the kind of treatment that you do to yourself by thinking twice ask the yeah. questions about what's behind this label i mean what kind of uh, ingredients are you putting behind a hawker center when you actually go there i think food is is culture food is fun but food is also health and i'm stating yeah. the obvious yeah. but so many people sometimes we just get carried away by how the product looks from the outside but we don't ask ourselves twice is this really helping me or not so it's as simple as that if you take care of yourself mentally, but also physically, I think food can actually help you to, to get along the way. Yeah. Pier Luigi, thanks so much yeah. uh, for being with us. We do have to leave it there. Pier Luigi Sigismondi, the global president of Dole Sunshine Company, talking about the new Dole specialty ingredients investment here in Singapore. Uh, appreciate your time today. Hope you'll come on again and, and talk to us uh, about future developments. All the best. Thanks again. Thank you.